The painting that I chose is from Elizabeth Chaplin and it's called Self-Portrait of a Painter from the beginning of the 20th century. I chose the painting because I really liked the colors of it. That was the first thing that struck my eye. And also the pose that she has in the painting. She doesn't look at the, at the viewer, but she is turned slightly away. And the colors are very vibrant. She wears a red coat with flowers on it and it's a very saturated red and the background is blue and black. I think it was the contrast of the colors of the blue and the, the red that attracted me and with the accents of the flowers on it and her very pale skin. Now I am working on the transformation of the painting into a bag and I chose the leather in coherence with the colors of the painting. And I'm using a really uh, vibrant blue leather for the lining of the bag. On the outside, I use natural leather with some silver accents. And um, I will use a very bright red leather for the stola that she's wearing. The stola on the picture has flowers on it and I will recreate these flowers in leather. I put the leather in water, shape them, and let them dry in this shape. And afterwards I paint them in the colors that I, that I chose. For the shape of the bag, I also take my inspiration from the shape of the painter in the picture, traces the line of the body underneath the stola that she's wearing, the coat. And the coat will be draped around the bag in the end and probably will be detachable. So one can decide if one wants to wear the bag with or without the red accent. For my project, I chose Artemisia, the artist Artemisia, and specifically her painting, um, The Allegory of Inclination. One of the reasons I chose this piece is because it kind of fits in, it ties in with the collection that I've been working on and these ideas that I've been working on for the last two years of this idea of being guided by the stars. You know, throughout history, humans, man, have, have always looked to the stars for guidance, for inspiration, and for dreams and hopes. And so I liked this idea of this painting, of this idea of leading and guiding you to your, your best self and what you're inclined as a person to do. And that was the reason that she made this piece was the characters, the eight characters of Michelangelo, and this being his inclination of greatness and this idea of this compass and the stars leading you to greatness and your best self. The actual piece and the techniques I'm using is a combination of mixed metals. So I'm using um, both sterling silver and 18 karat gold. I'm creating a sort of compass with the north star in the middle of the compass. And I've done piercing and sawing technique to actually cut the pieces out, I'm soldering them together. And then in the middle of the star, I'm going to set a sapphire and then do a little bit of engraving around the star to kind of really bring out the shining and the brightness of the star. I chose Artemisia Gentileschi's David and Bathsheba. This combination of Artemisia and her life of drama, this painting, the story of this woman who has no choice but to be procured almost by, by a man, um, and also the story of this actual painting is incredibly fascinating because it was left in a state, in a terrible state, and sort of rediscovered by advancing women artists in Florence, in Palazzo Pitti. The state of the painting when they found it was atrocious. In fact, a third of the paint was missing from the entire painting, including a massive, massive piece of damage on Bathsheba's actual face. 
So Advancing Women Artists um, funded the project to restore this painting. But instead of repainting this massive damaged face of Bathsheba, they kind of painted in the idea of her face. They didn't repaint in her eye, which is completely missing from the painting. In the piece that I'm making, I've decided to work with the fact that this part of her face is missing and actually cut out of the clay the damaged pieces, the pieces that are missing. Then the fact that Bathsheba's looking into a mirror, I thought maybe I could work with a mirror. And giving this sort of idea that we're looking into the mirror through Bathsheba's face, damaged face. We're looking at ourselves through her neglected face. She's been neglected. And so we as modern women are going to be reflecting ourselves through this neglect of a piece of artwork that should have been cared for and looked after and, and, and it simply wasn't. I chose Titina Mazzelli's painting, which is inspired by the great actress Greta Garbo, because it was one of the strongest ones to me. I really liked the powerful strokes, the lines, and the dynamism that is visible in every detail of the painting. So not only in the expression and the face of the subject, but also in the small details of her vest. So I thought that a funny technique that I might use could be the 3D printing pen. And I'm experimenting with a new technique that is usually not meant to be for jewelry makers and it's called electroforming. And it just uses electricity to cover any shape in any material in metal. So I start with my plastic fragments and I paint them with a copper-based paint that I make myself so that they become conductive. And when the paint is dry, I can put everything in a special bath. It's a copper-based bath in which I use electricity to um, move copper parts from a sheet of pure copper to my plastic painted shape. And in this way, I can have some solid parts, some metal parts, rigid and durable, and keep at the same time the color from the plastic filament. This painting is actually black and white, but mostly her production uses uh, very bright colors, and the filaments of plastic that I'm using are also coming in very bright colors. I chose Leonetta Cecchi Peracci. Inspired by her collection of ideas, her diary entries, her communication through text and language, her love of books, and her process. So I think that with my research of this individual, she recounted and through her recounting, um, whether it be text oriented or image oriented, recounted a story that people could uh, respond to, reflect on, through her correspondence, even literally respond to her. In this project, I think the parallel would be that I would want someone to have some sort of reaction to this, because in my abstract way, I'm giving them a piece of me, not really explaining what that is, and then hopefully they can somehow relate to that piece in their own personal way. Materials I use for this project are primarily paper-based. There are different pieces of little papers that I've collected, that I've drawn, ideas that I've kept consistently with me for decades that I've, I've illustrated in this process. Papers, imagery, um, whether they be handmade papers, even ticket stubs, stamps. And it's going to be an artist book that has a dialogue between, in this case, myself that's making it in its abstract way 
and the viewer who's going to then hopefully see pages or entries of it which are going to have a reaction to them based on the content work.